The goal of USML-1 was to study different scientific processes with the hope of uncovering physical properties hidden by the gravitational influences on Earth. A newly developed crystal growth furnace was used to produce semiconducting crystals and metals and alloys through directional solidification. This process involves melting the sample, then re-solidifying while applying a thermal gradient by motion of the furnace. On the mid-deck of the orbiter itself, zeolite crystals were grown, which are complex arrangements of silica and alumina. Having an open three-dimensional crystalline structure, the zeolite crystals are molecular sieves which make them useful as catalysts, filters, absorbents, and ion exchange materials. Protein crystals were also grown to gain a better understanding of protein structure. This knowledge could lead to the development of foods with better nutritional value as well as new and improved medicines. Another setup, the Astroculture 1 experiment, used two circuits of porous tubes to study water and nutrient transport through a rooting matrix. Within the space lab itself, the solid surface combustion experiment was set up to measure flame spread rate, as well as solid and gas phase temperatures. In a gravity environment, buoyancy is a factor where hot gases rise and fuel is fed by convection. Buoyancy and convection are also characteristics of fluid dynamics, which can cause imperfect mixtures, leading to defects in materials such as glasses, ceramics, and metals. The surface tension-driven convection experiment measured the effect of fluid motion by surface and bulk heating. One of the most interesting fluid dynamics experiments was the drop physics module. Fluids on Earth, when they are in contact with the walls of containers, are subject to contamination and surface distortion. The drops were manipulated by sound waves. Four special loudspeaker assemblies were built for this purpose by JBL, a leading manufacturer of audio components. By changing the relative frequencies emitted by the speakers, the drops were made to rotate, vibrate, split, and recombine. One experiment involved the interaction of fluids mixed with surfactants or materials that change surface tension. Also observed was the behavior of unmixable liquids by deploying one drop inside another. The space acceleration measurement system was another experiment to determine the potential effects of acceleration and vibration. The system consists of sensors placed in various locations inside the space lab. Information gathered by this system will be correlated with the results of the mission's experiments. The most surprising experimental finding was in the biological studies. It was discovered that cardiac output, the amount of blood pumped by the heart, increased 50% and remained high for the entire flight. At the same time, however, the heart rate decreased and mean blood pressure stayed constant as a result of high perfusion where organs are engorged with blood. During an earlier space shuttle mission, measurements of central venous pressure, or the filling pressure of the heart, indicated a large decrease, which lasted for the entire nine days of the mission. Scientists had expected the opposite, for the pressure to increase slowly as the lack of gravity caused the release of blood that was pooled in the lower body. After the return of the July flight, physical examinations of the astronauts revealed that the cardiovascular system took nearly a week to readjust. Other biological experiments were performed in the generic bioprocessing apparatus, such as the formation of collagen and of bone tissue. To handle the ship's mission, the seven crew members were divided into two teams with alternating 12-hour shifts. During their break periods, the astronauts spoke to ham radio operators on Earth and learned about the effects of microgravity on a daily routine. We got a chance to uh, do uh, food operations, as I would call them, and uh, everybody uh, would try to come up with some new uh, stunts to outdo the next person uh, with uh, rotating spoons or uh, floating... Uh, meatballs, or whatever Ken is trying to grapple with, potatoes. <laughs> this personal hygiene kit, it seemed like every time I opened it up, 
there was about three or four things I wanted to take out. This was an unsuccessful attempt to manage that. <laughs>